Greetings and salutations, listener, and welcome to another edition of the Coco and Dalt's podcast. We're real people with real reviews. I'm not Coco. And I'm not Dalt. And what spectacular thing did we just watch recently, Coco, that we are going to review in this podcast now? So if you're listening to this in real time, yesterday, Friday, Netflix released the Netflix original movie, I Care A Lot. It's two-ish hours. It stars Oscar nominee Rosamund Pike as Marla. She's a court-appointed guardian for like the elderly and the infirm who can no longer make decisions for themselves and get put into care homes. Unfortunately, she's also a scam artist. She has a major grift going what? on. Yeah. She has a major grift going on with another uh, with a doctor played by Alicia Witt. These two find elderly people who are ripe for the picking financially and get emergency hearings to have them put into care homes, and then they basically bleed all these people's assets dry. Uh, the two of them team up to put a 69-year-old woman named Jennifer, played by Diane Weist, into a care home, only... With Jennifer, they bite off a little more than they can chew because... Should I do a little bit of spoiling here, Dalts? It's up to you, really. Okay, I want to... You know I like the spoilers. You like... I won't listen. Okay. So Jennifer uh, is not her real name. She's actually the mother of a Russian uh, mobster played by Peter Dinklage. Uh, Jennifer is an assumed identity, and they thought that she had been unmarried and had no children, no living relatives, and was sitting on a pile of cash. And she is sitting on a pile of cash, only she has some shady people looking out for her who soon discover that she's been put into a care home. They, they're they wise to the grift. And the rest of the movie is Marla trying to not be killed by Russian gangsters. Mm-hmm. And yeah. So, <laughs> And for the record, I would like to state publicly here and now that if I ever get checked into a, an, old, an, age old, an old age home <laughs> and Coco is living on the, on the, the fortunes of the podcast, <laughs> then you'll know something has gone wrong and she totally was informed by this meet, uh, movie. So uh, do you have anything to add to the summary, Dalts? No, actually, the summary was very good and concise. Also detailed, but not too detailed, because you still want people to be able to watch the movie. So then what is your opinion on I Care A Lot? So first of all, it's a dopey title. <laughs> like, is this a... I Care A Lot is from, is like some 80s band did a song on I Care A Lot. I, I, that's what I think of that. And I also think that... Uh, it could have been something else. Like I was trying to think of alternative titles when we were watching the movie last night. I was thinking like, you know, dangerous informers or something like that. Like, <laughs> like con women or, you know, there's, there's all sorts of possibilities. A, so the title doesn't do anything for me. I was going to say, is that your biggest complaint? Cause no. I mean, that's pretty good if that's no. your only complaint. That's I'm just getting rolling. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, B, I, I am a big fan of Peter Dinklage. I thought he was ir- sort of inconsistent in this one. I would agree with that. He was brilliant in some parts, but in other parts, he just looked like he was acting. The last two scenes he had with Rosamund Pike, where he played it very serious, mm-hmm. um, I thought he was fantastic in those. Yeah. Like the quiet, yeah. yeah, just the quiet danger. Mm-hmm. Like he was fantastic in those scenes. But in early scenes, it's like... They couldn't figure out what they wanted to do with that character. Mm-hmm. So he was like a little clownish and he is like eating eclairs and he's throwing smoothies around. And like, so when he was like really over the top, he just took me completely out of the movie. But those last two scenes with Rosamund Pike, he, he just hit it out of the park. I, I think you hit the nail on the head right there, Coco. And also I've seen outraged Peter Dinklage before and it was in Elf. And he was great in that, and it was fantastic, and he played it perfectly. And I, so I've seen him do that already, and to see him do the outrage again, is it you know is it is it the small guy thing you know like the outrage? So I, I wasn't really I was kind of wondering about his performance off and on. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I also uh, was not uh, a big fan of, when you say that he, he wasn't sure as to what role he was playing, I also wasn't sure if the movie was sure about mm-hmm. what it wanted to be. Because it started off like very, very cool, you know, the, the music and the narration, the voiceover and the, 
quick cuts and everything like that. It felt like a really hip kind of Ocean's Eleven almost kind of thing. And then it just kind of devolved a little bit to me is that I didn't want to see any of these characters succeed. Right. Nobody was likable. No. Um, I mean, I think that was intentional. Yeah, totally. Um, these are all terrible people. They're all terrible people. And w- at one point when uh, Rosamund Pike's, uh, her character was winning sort of thing, I was like, I don't really, I don't care. I, I wasn't rooting for her. I wasn't rooting against her. It was like, well, she's not going to win, is she? Because she's a horrible person. Mm-hmm. But then on the other side of the coin, you got this guy who's Russian mafia, I guess. Mm-hmm. And is he going to win? And he's going to be the successful guy and he's killed everybody. So I uh, I had a tough time identifying with any of those characters. It's kind of like the whole the old Seinfeld thing. is like, they're just horrible people <laughs> and you just don't want to like any of them. And it's the same idea with this movie. I mean, I think the, the concept, the plot... The pacing, uh, the setting, everything was pretty good. I think it, it could have been a lot better, but I just had a tough time really identifying with any of those characters. I think it was sort of like a 2021 update on Wall Street, right? Right. Like the characters are like, greed is good, and right. you're not supposed to root for them, but people do root for them. And that's kind of a commentary on society. It's just... Do- as as Norm Peterson said on Cheers, it's a dog eat dog world, and I'm eating milk bone underwear, right? So, <laughs> well, and I also like the idea that it is con men story, to- you know, torn uh, apart and told from a women's perspective, like right. two women pulling mm-hmm. over the you know the con, and it's a high end, sophisticated con uh, taking advantage, like you said, off the top of poor pe- or of older people uh, and their money and and that sort of thing. I, and I like that spin because there's a lot of people probably in that situation. We have a lot of aging baby baby boomers and that sort of thing. And that's completely terrifying too. That, right. Like I I know that each state's laws are different in terms of you know whether a person can be held against their will or whatever. But so I don't know if that's the law in the state of Massachusetts or if that was just made up by whole cloth. But the idea is terrifying Mm -hmm. that somebody is not even present at a hearing where they're declared unfit to live on their own. And now they're forced into a care facility and they don't even have their cell phone. Yeah. And so that's just completely terrifying. And that was the most horrifying part of the movie to me. It was like, yeah, this can, can this actually happen? I mean, it was just so amazing. And one day this woman is sitting at her table, reading her newspaper, listening to your music in her beautiful home. And the next day she's drugged up and in this little tiny uh, rest home uh, room that she didn't have any part of and didn't uh, decide Mm -hmm. and have no, play in her life so i i just really uh to me this is a horror movie i mean yeah that part of it is is terrifying Mm -hmm. yeah i uh i i agree yeah it i it sucked because you you don't want these are all terrible people like you said you don't want to root for any of them but at the end when uh rosamund pike's character is the uh like she she's attempted to be whacked (laughs) and but she she wakes up during it like she had been drugged but and she wakes up and she manages to escape and like while she's escaping i'm like come on come on and then i'm like why am i rooting for her right. to live like i don't she's awful and she probably is getting what she deserves <laughs> yeah and and that's why the ending is kind of appropriate i won't spoil the ending but the ending brings it all together in that regard so i think that the uh People who are making the movie decided, yeah, these characters are intentionally unlikable. Mm -hmm. And we're going to come to a conclusion there that helps you with that guilt. Because Mm -hmm. you're rooting for these awful people. You're you're picking a side. You're picking Peter Dinklage's side. Or you're picking the the con women's side. Mm -hmm. Because there are no other sides. It's not like there's an in-between. There's like a cop trying to chase down the answers. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we're rooting for him or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I, uh, what did you think overall, Coco? I don't know if we really got into your opinion <laughs> while so, I was riffing on it. So I liked it. Mm-hmm. I didn't love it, but it was, it was enjoyable. It mm-hmm. was just about two hours long. I thought the pacing was really good. It held my attention throughout. Mm-hmm. The performances were fantastic. Like, like I mentioned, those last couple scenes of Peter Dinklage, um, he was great in those. Mm-hmm. Rosamund Pike was just solid throughout. Like, she plays great villainesses. <laughs> right. Like, people who are just morally bankrupt. Yeah. And she was fantastic. Yeah. There was one scene of her with, uh, I believe the actor's name is Chris Messina. He plays a lawyer who... So uh, Peter Dinklage's character does not want it revealed that he is trying to get Diane Weist out of the care home. So he sends a shady lawyer uh, to 
Marla's office to basically try to bribe her to get Diane Weist released from the care home. And the scene between Rosamund Pike and Chris Messina as the shady lawyer mm-hmm. is just, I mean, they were just matching each other, just mm-hmm. shot for shot. It was so good. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris Messina only had a couple scenes in the movie, but he was fantastic. Yeah, he was great. Yeah. So the uh, the performances were really good. The plot was very interesting. Like we have mentioned, the whole idea of being able to be committed against your will is just completely horrifying. Um, And hopefully that's not a thing that's actually (laughs) realistic. Um, So that's horrifying. And it kind of went in different directions than I expected. I didn't really know much about this going into it. Um, I I. just knew it had a great cast. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to watch it. And I thought it was just going to start out being one thing, but then suddenly you bring in Diane Weist's background that's hidden and yeah it was it it was twisty but Mm -hmm. i enjoyed it for what it was one big beef i will say i have with it is that for being russian gangsters they are not good at killing people (laughs) (laughs) they're really bad at killing like rosamund pike and her wife both should have died right but but they did not like you, really, you're telling me so? Like Rosamund Pike's wife goes back to their townhouse to get their passports, which they forgot. Mm-hmm. And a couple, you know, Russian gangsters come in, and apparently they hit her over the head, and then they turn the gas stove on. Mm-hmm. But even though Rosamund Pike has also just been the subject of like a hit and has survived, she manages to get back to the townhouse before it blows up. Right. And even though her wife has been hit over the head and she's laying in a pool of her blood, she manages somehow to wake her wife up. (laughs) And then they leave right before the townhouse explodes. And I'm like, you know, the Russian, any mafia really should be better at killing people than (laughs) this. Right. So, and that's not an invitation, by the way. No, no, for sure not. So that uh, that that was a little suspension of disbelief, right there. Yeah, but. there were a couple of scenes like that too, where I was like, "Really? Do you think that would really happen?" Like, there's uh, when you when you watch a movie like this, and it's it's got a real clever turn to it, and you're intrigued. You're thinking it's going to be better than other movies in certain regards, and I think that that was one of them. Is like, do we really have to rely on the TV show 90s immortality of some of these like oh I'm shot oh I'm fine now <laughs> right like meanwhile the bad guys like those bad guys when they were in the uh, old folks home trying to trying to free the the grandma or the mother I should mm-hmm. say and the one guy gets blown away and the other guy gets knocked out by a flying gas canister <laughs> that was really funny <laughs> that was funny but the, the impossibility of that right. situation it's like, really? Is that going to happen? I mean, it was a good use of that kind of thing and a good use of setting because you know that that's going to be something that happens in mm-hmm. a senior's uh, home. They're going to have right. those uh, oxygen tanks floating around. But still, it would, there were a couple of situations like that. I, I liked it. I thought it was it would be a good viewing. But I think we're starting to get sort of, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel in the pandemic stuff. Like we're getting to this stuff like, this is highly touted. I care a lot. Watch this. And it's really not top tier entertainment. Like I think we... A lot of the top tier entertainment we've seen has been earlier in the pandemic, and like I said, we're we're getting close. So hopefully, uh, production of better movies will uh, will be ongoing. Maybe it's ongoing right now, like Ted Lasso season two is going on right now, uh, and there are other things that are being produced that hopefully we can look forward to. So then, what grade would you give? I care a lot. Um, I would give it a six out of ten based on the idea and the acting. I agree that the performances were really good. Um, it just the second and third act kind of let me down a little bit, um, but other than that, you know, it's it's a decent enough watch, and it's two hours, like you said. So it's not like you're, it's not like the Irishman where you get to the end and you're like, <laughs> oh, I wish I hadn't have done that, <laughs> right? Or like R- Ratchet, where we watched that whole thing and was like, yeah, I, I want to rinse my brain after watching that. <laughs> what would you be uh, grading this one, Coco? I'd give it a B to B minus. Yeah, like, yeah, the performances were really solid. Um, yeah, the the plot was intriguing and. It it was just a shade under two hours, so it wasn't The Irishman, but it, <laughs> even though The Irishman was a three and a half hour long movie, it felt like an eight hour long movie, you know? like felt like a mini series. Right. Like we had to stop it multiple times to get up and go to the bathroom and get some water and let the dog out and stuff. And this was not, this was not that. Like yeah. it, it definitely kept going at a good clip. Yeah. So yeah, I'd give it a B, maybe a B minus. All right. Anything else to add about this uh, monumentous occasion? Yeah. <laughs> 
No, I don't think so. What about you? No, I think I'm good. All right, rock and roll. So thanks for listening, listener. We appreciate your support. Until next time, I'm not Dalt. And I'm not Coco. 